Welcome to the Live Love Play podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Kinsler, and today I get the pleasure of sitting and talking to the founders of the program Teen Lift. Justin Harris and Jose Greenspoon are two amazing people that have inspired me and are inspiring coaches around the world to want to work and understand the issues that people, and teens especially, struggling with their weight have. The Teen Lift program has been going for a few years now, and it, from its humble beginnings, it has grown from strength to strength. It is based entirely off fact and science and research, and it is showing and helping teenagers to not over, uh, overcome their weight, uh, but how to look at food, how to look at life, and understand that there is more out there, and they can achieve great things through discipline and working hard and working with the right community guys this was a great show justin is on the show for the majority of it uh, there is a few audio issues at the beginning but it clears up and jose literally out of surgery jumps on the call for the last 20 minutes i hope you enjoy and then don't forget to like and subscribe dealing with like diabetic children and pre-diabetic yeah. diabetes and <clears throat> as a result was asking us about teen lift so yeah you know that's just another avenue potentially opening up so it's exciting it's fun to get on those conversations yeah like i i i'm quite intrigued about this is kind of one of the podcasts that i've been looking to do for a while um and just because of what you guys are doing uh, and then like, we're not, we wouldn't be where you are in America at the moment, but like we did, I did some research in Ireland, like one of four kids are overweight or obese, uh, but we're not acknowledging it in the slightest. <laughs> and right. it is like, it's becoming like crazy, like to the, to the point where like I ended to, to talk this morning, I was say I gave the stats out to like 30 business owners who have kids and I was like, this is not self-inflicted. This is a social thing. This is yeah. home environment, school environment, uh, political environment. It's not the school's fault. It's not the government's fault. It's, we all have to take responsibility. But at the end of the day, if you have a four-year-old or five-year-old, it's your responsibility to be a parent more than a friend and like say no and because you're building very bad habits and then become teenagers. Like for example, I was over just at the local shop grabbing a coffee and there was like 12, 13 year olds all drinking large cans of monster. Yeah. You know, it's as bad so as me bad. going to get a coffee. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not going to be pro positive further down the line. Uh, and just yeah. trying to get that sort of like, yeah, getting people to, <sighs> I don't know, just kind of cop on a little bit in regards to what we should be doing, how we should be helping. And then even the kind of way that uh, Jose wrote the, the questions, his responses, that made me think of it even differently in a, in a different light as well. Like, um, so yeah, I just think it's, it's crazy that there's more, activities there's more gyms that are working with kids there's more of everything out there but yet we're still getting worse so there's definitely a, a, a can there's something missing and absolutely you know um it's funny i actually just got a text from jose i he is not sure right now um basically he said the anesthesia guy is behind and it's not working so he's still in the er um um, but we can go through, we can talk, we can go through whatever you want. And if yeah. you want to get on again with him, we can um, obviously jump on any time with him as yeah. well. Um, okay. You know, it's, it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so did you, uh, did you get the email I sent yesterday? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I saw all these questions. Um, you know, the, the really interesting thing that it's funny, you mentioned, you, you talk, we talk about obesity and, we know it's common. We know it's happening and we can always put our finger on a lot of reasons why it's happening. Yeah. But the, 
the part that I don't think parents understand, I, I'm a I'm a PE teacher here at a um, independent school in St. Louis, and I was a classroom teacher for 10 years before I got into teaching PE. And so everything I went through was you would look at you would look at data, you would analyze this, a child as a reader, as a writer, and you would yeah. grow. And it was everything was about growth. Well, we can tell from an obesity standpoint that it's growing in the wrong direction. Mm. And and we know a lot of the reasons why. But the problem I think has a lot to do with parents and how as a society are we choosing to raise our children? And parenting is really, really hard work. Mm. And it's tiresome. We all have jobs. We, uh, you know, the, the, the list goes on and on. And the society, at least in the U.S. right now, is let's overprogram our kids as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and then when we do that, when they want something, we just give them whatever they want. And so what happens is, what happens is these younger kids, especially like the three, four, and five-year-olds that I'm watching right now, and we have an amazing um, population of kids that do not have any challenges with obesity. Yeah. But what I notice is their attention spans are shorter. Um, their understanding of manners, they're, they're still great kids. They're nice kids. But the way we teach them five years ago from, t from now and five years ago is completely different. Like kids are coming to us now at four years old and they have – they used to know how to skip or they yeah. maybe skipped a rope and now they're not sure how to walk up the stairs without their feet coming together every time, you know, and what we see here at our school is when I usually share the skipping data with our JK and kindergarten um, <clears throat> teachers, there's usually a correlation there with the kids that step one at a time versus every other, yeah. you know, and, and they're reading. And so, you know, the, um, the, these changes that we're, we're making in society I hate that it's looking like it's going to get to this breaking point before we make any changes. We know it's happening. We know it's spiraling. And the whole reason why Jose and I started team lift was because we were, we were, we used to lift weights at odd times because doctor and I coach all my kids teams. So we were, he was busy. We would lift out hours and learn this, um, this service kick and I'm stomach sir and he hey, this is insane like you shouldn't do this I was completely against everything that he was talking about no 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 you don't understand these kids they're failing them and if we do something no. sorry listen I'm, I'm you are using sorry dude I don't know what I, I think we went dead there Okay, no worries. <clears throat> Sorry, don't know what happened there, but um, we will <laughs> resume that. What you were saying, I didn't. Uh, I didn't hear you. Yeah. always breaking up with you. <clears throat> we were just. I was just talking about how Jose and I. We start like very odd in the day because you know of his surgery and being on call and things like that. And so when yeah. we would lift, he would tell me the the kids he's seeing the things that he's learning, how he's practicing um, these different types of surgeries. And I thought it was just absolutely insane yeah. that he would do these surgeries on kids. But when he really broke it down and explained that he's doing it to save their lives, because yeah. if we don't, you know, they're, they're on the fast track um, to death that we, we really started diving into like the why, why is that happening? And, you know, we can go to the culture of, <laughs> Um, you know, we know that sports, at least here in the U S and I'm sure you're dealing with the same thing. Mm. They're more prevalent than ever. And if you want to be good at a sport, everybody tells you, you have to play it a year round. Yeah. You know, you can never take a break. I mean, and so these parents that were never top athletes, but they have money, want to spend ever to make their kid the next one they watch on TV. Um, and then if you're the kid that isn't from a family that has money or, or, it doesn't have a parent that can, can handle that because maybe that's their only job because you're a single parent family or you live in an area that's figure. And unfortunately here in the U S we have schools that are wonderful. Like the school I work out is one in miles away that are struggling for funding. And these kids don't have the same options that we do. 
And so uh, I was telling him, I said, you should, we should come up with patients when they come out of your surgeries. And we should help them before the surgery build on that and be ready to go into that surgery. And post give them the option to, to see the results they want to change their lives. Funny, he came, he came next day, like, like an extra hours last night. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? He's like, I've researched every medical research journal out on obesity, and there is nothing that is structured like this, these patients. And so then we started talking, talking like, what would a good program look like? And I, I'm sure just like, I had Jeff and Mick for forever um, yeah. from the very beginning. And when I became a PE teacher, I told my boss, like, um, I don't have a background in physical education. I was a high school varsity baseball coach for 10 years. Um, I know, I know how to weight train that are the experts in this and to go and train and learn from them. And so they were all about it and, and let us go into that. So as uh, Suzanne and I were talking about what to do, I said, I know exactly the people that we need to talk to. We need to talk to Jeff and Mickey and, and Jeff and Mickey and I had been talking already because a lot of the things that I do as far as, um, fitness testing here at my school, we've just collapsed on about movement patterns and kids and I called Jeff and Mickey and talked to them about this idea we had and I'm like you know we we really feel like a good strength component budget coaching great but we feel like to have some sort of like we need to change the behavior we need to change the habit and we don't exactly know how and it was funny because I was on a zoom call and Jeff and Mickey kind of look at each other grin real big and then look back and say we have an idea <laughs> and so they ended up um, connecting us with Topuku, which stands for the only person you cheat is you. And it is a program that was started by Norm Mulder. He's retired now and all he wants to do is help anyone he can with this message. And so the whole program is based on lifestyle change and habits. And there are, it's really looking at your life and your philosophy in life from you know, what do you do every day? How do you look at a habit and decide like, man, I really am hungry and I want to reach the bag of chips mm. or I want to grab the bag of carrots, you know, like what happens through that thought process right there. And we, re they really break it down and help kids understand like, why do I keep doing that? And then getting them to understand like, what are my odds of success? You know, if I, if we say to any kid and, and we talk about this in one of our lessons with the kids, if I told you all today, that you need to go out. We're going to do a five mile run. Every kid in our T lift class is going to be like, I'm out of here. I'm yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. that. There's no way I can't do it. But if I said, I'm going to pay all of you a thousand dollars and show them the money and say, you're going to run five miles. Every kid's going to do it or yeah. die trying no doubt. And everyone's like that. So what we try to get them to understand is, you know, the odds of success, if you put more work into it, you're going to achieve greater results. Mm. And to understand that nothing comes easy from day one, you know, yeah. um, I tell the kids every day, every day you show up, it's a win. We want to win every moment we have. And every moment you come in here is a win. And what, so what we've done is we've taken all the research that we can find and we've made team lift. And so everything we do from the amount of interactions that we have with kids. So our program is a four month lifestyle coaching program where we meet three day, three times a week for an hour and a half. So, we end up with 52 sessions. And what we know is that if we have 52 touch points or interactions with a child, that is going to be the greatest chance to have success and impact on a child. Yeah. So that was the whole basis for why we created this. And every, every class involves, you know, we start out every class with the lesson of the day with Topuku. Um, and there are seven basic lessons and then it goes into a finisher program. Every finisher program starts with short-term, mid-range and long-term goals from your life, you know, finances and work life, spiritual health. And, um, you know, and then looking at that philosophy again and how do we change it? And 
for a lot of the kids, it's very impactful, especially with the home life, because a lot of these kids that we have, if we ask them to draw a picture of what dinner looks like, mm. most of these kids are from broken homes. And so dinner could be, I have five bucks and I'm at the gas station, right? And what am I going to find? And a lot of these kids, the other part that we've, we've noticed with our cohorts we've done so far, these kids live in food deserts. There aren't healthy choices anywhere around them. And so what we've, what we've done here in St. Louis is we've partnered up with a guy by the name of Ken Mao. He owns a company called Full, and they basically provide a lot of meals for, um, you know, functional fitness gyms and yeah. people that want to <clears throat> train and eat right there. And yeah, so yeah, what yeah. he's done, I, we called him just to talk about the experience. And it's really cool when you meet great people because he's one of those people. He was, he, he's a chef. He's been a college counselor, like he's done a number of things. And we told him about Teen Lift and how we're helping these kids. And before we got off that first phone conversation, he's like, here's what I can do. I'll be there on Sunday. I'll come every Sunday I can. And I'll bring those guys food every week. And I'm That's like, amazing. really? Like, <laughs> wow, we thought maybe you would just show up one time and you know talk about it, maybe teach him about what a plate looks like. Because mm. truly it's as simple as drawing a plate and cutting half and saying half of that plate needs to be vegetables every meal mm. they're half into two quarters and like here's your protein and then what you have here are carbs and we even we've even told kids like hey i don't care if you eat a half a plate of vegetables i don't care what that quarter of carbs yes yeah. like. because you're looking it's for a uh, win <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah exactly. it's, and, and that's something like and, I, I was actually speaking with people this morning and they were talking about diet nutrition and i was she was saying that she went to someone and she was told to quit this and that, and she had to let you give up everything. She had to quit like stuff she loved to do because she was burnt out, and then the food that she needed to eat wouldn't sustain her. And I was like, "How much coffee do you have?" And she's like, "I have five, six coffees a day. Could you have three? Yeah, right. Then you're winning. Let's go with small yeah. successes because the the overhaul. And I get that with the plate because with the plate, it's like if you're having the vegetables and let like." you're having maple syrup on mashed potatoes. It doesn't matter what you're having. You're having the exactly. vegetables. You're winning. Yeah. You're starting to win. And it's all about, um, it, it's all about a win. I like for me, when I work with kids or teens or adults, it's, it's, I don't care how small the win is. Once there's a win and we can yeah. work from there. But if we go, right, if you, uh, you said, right, you can only have vegetables and lean meat every single meal that's going to be a little bit harder. They're out the door. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're, 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 well, and you know, your carbohydrates are kind of like your thousand euros or your thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing, like, you know, we're dealing with children that have been on a, a really um, terrible path of life and you're not going to get them just like a smoker. How many smokers do you know that are going to decide I'm done right now? And that's going to be, forever. That's a really hard challenge to do. And so what we have to do is we have to take these kids along and build on what positive wins we can have every interaction. And so, mm. you know, um, we talk a lot about parent involvement in our program. And when we talk to all of our kids and all of our parents, we explain to them that like, if you just, if the kids are just on their own doing this, you're going to still have some success, but it's not going to be as great as it could be. And yeah. so everyone needs to be on board. And so parent participation, we have parent classes every time we have a teen lift class we have someone there designated to train the parents and we've had parents that come in every class we actually had a, a mother who came to every single class she never missed one class and in four months lost 40 pounds and and we did low skill no skill movements mm. but she was consistent and she stayed and listened to the topuku lessons she had the nutritional coaching and she started to make this change i mean it was great the first day i watched her like try to do a pull up, mm. you know, like she just getting on a box to stand and put her hands up there. She's like, I've never in my life even thought I would be in this position, yeah. you know, to ever look. And, and, and that was, and that's great. But you know, the parent that drives their child every day to our teen lift classes is participating just as much in our opinion as the parent who's willing to go through the workouts Yeah, because they're at least showing that they care enough to help them get there. And, and, um, and, and so never, I, I suppose it'd be nervous for parents to, because your children look up to you nine, like nine times out of 10, your children will look up to you. 
So it would be nervous if you weren't confident in yourself to show weakness or a, a frailty in front of your kids. So if you weren't able to do a movement or you got out of breath and you had to sit down, like that, that could be a defeating embarrassment to a parent, which they'd rather not go through, which I totally get. Um, but like you said, like everyone that's like the parents are driving their kids or that woman that lost 40 pounds, it's, it doesn't matter how, as you said, like it doesn't matter how big the win is once you're winning. And every touch point is a success. And absolutely. So like, um, I, I, I totally get that. And for me, it seems like there's like, with the team of Teen Lift, there's a, a fair bit of passion in regards to how you conduct an approach because obviously you can't just be an average Joe coach in regards to, oh, I'll just take a Teen Lift program. I think, and I think it's like kids, you have to be passionate about that endeavor. Um, so what is it that I know like you and Jose and the rest of your crew, like what is it that drives you more so? Because the, the program from what I've been following is is doing amazing things for these kids. It's changing, literally changing lives. Why is it so, why are you so passionate about it? What, what kind of drives you? Um, I, I mean, there are so many different factors. For one, I'm a parent and I have two children. Yeah. And so selfishly, I, um, you know, like most people that are interested in, in training, I want to set a good example for my children. Um, I also, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Catholic here. And one of the things that I look at a lot is what can I do for others? So for me, that this is, this is that avenue, you know, yeah. using the skills that I have to try to help other people. It's, it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I talk to the kids at my school here. We talk about a program and actually one of our children here after he, um, our, our school goes till sixth grade here. And one of the kids, when he turned 13, he's like, coach, I really want to do this program. Mm -hmm. And his, him and his whole family came. Um, he has two other brothers. They showed up every class and did a, did a tremendous job. But what drives us and all of our coaches is just um, the, the will to want to be, be better people yeah. and to want to help children achieve great results. I mean, and the people that we've asked, nobody here has earned a cent. Mm. on what we've done yet we've done it all organically to show the data and how and how these kids can grow now we're getting to the point where we're growing the way we need to but we carefully selected our coaches initially that <clears throat> are um you know maybe don't look like um joe schmo trainer over at globo gym yeah. you know that's like look at me i'm gonna um i can help you you know let's you're just going to lift weights as much as possible with the most volume you can. And I'm going to drill it into you. It's not the biggest loser. Mm. You know, we're, um, we're not, we're not going through those things. These people all um, for the most part are parents or work with children. And so they have that background and connection and they're compassionate people. Um, and the biggest part of all is, is they've all been trained by, the leaders in youth fitness with Jeff and Mickey with yeah. the PYCC program. So we, all of our coaches have been through our nutritional, nutritional training, the PYCC program and the Topuku program yeah. um, for certification. So they're all knowledgeable on that. And then we, um, you know, we connect with these children. Um, you know, most of our population so far has been African-American mm -hmm. children and I I'm not an African-American. I can't relate to them in the way that, um, a lady that I work with who is African-American came and started help working with our kids yeah. and she's phenomenal. And there's a, there's a connection there. Um, but we've created a small community where these kids can come in after normal gym hours. So they feel safe. Their parents feel safe. Yeah. They can take risks and they can open up. And truly that's what we've noticed the most. How many of these children have been bullied day in and day out of their schools is it's the numbers are staggering. Um, one of our, one of our kids, Al, and I'm sure you've seen pictures of Al over time. Um, one of my favorite kids we've ever had, he's lost over a hundred pounds. Is that spending Ali, a year with he's, us uh, and he's glasses kind of dready hair. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 He, he's phenomenal. Now his mom doesn't do our workouts. His nephew Paris joins us and sits and watches every class. His mom drives him every single day. If she can't, he has cousins, aunts, mm. siblings. The whole family is all about helping out. And he 
has made such great strides. I mean, even when we weren't in session, he, he sends me messages through remind. We use a remind app to connect mm. outside of the gym and he'll be like, Hey, can I have a kind of a workout today, coach? And he, he quit his old school because the bullying was so bad and was placed in a new school. And to see, he sent me a, it was about a month ago. He sent me a picture of him with an honor roll certificate. Yeah. And that was the kid that the first week I met him and tried to talk to him between sets mm-hmm. and get to know him. I was like, how was school this week? And he kind of shook his head. And, and Al, um, Al is not a very vocal person because he, he has a stuttering, mm. um, s- stuttering disability. And one of the things that I hope we can get into a team lift eventually is in the summertime when our programs are running is giving these kids additional support they need in the classroom, yeah. like speech therapy, different types of um, tutoring. And I've, we've actually have two interns for this summer from Washington University here in St. Louis that are going to be there to provide that yeah. for some of these kids. And Al was like, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to school this week. And I'm like, what was it? I don't understand. Were you sick? He's like, no, I, I just don't want to go to school. The, um, everybody's mean to me. Now this is, Al's a six foot two, you know, 400 pound man standing in front mm. of me. And he's talking about kids making fun of him. And I'm like, you're a pretty big guy. I don't know if I would necessarily want to make fun of you. And he's like, no, it's not like that. He's like, they just always say stuff, you know, and it, it gets to me. Yeah. Um, and, and he was a kid that started, we first started squatting with him. You know, we're doing box squats and we're using five pound dumbbells, mm. right? Like we're, we're starting from the bare minimum basics of teaching the squat with him. And by the time we finished, you know, he, he squatted well over um, 225 pounds, which was a phenomenal like, change. Now, it was a I'm phenomenal sure, change. I'm sure and it, mentally, though, that empowered him that yeah. he's very strong. I and mean, then I, I like I, I like that. What we do is that when we teach, when we show kids that they can do something like today, we're doing rope climbs and a few of our kids figured it out. Yeah. And just that that switch that they're very good at something and they're stronger. I think like it builds the mental capacity, mental resilience. And having, as you say, a kid who is very in on himself, is being bullied, doesn't want to go to school, and then he squats, what, 225. Yeah. That's, like, that only builds confidence. Um, and, he was, and he was so mad at us, too, because when we, we set up a powerlifting meet for them at the end so they can yeah. feel like athletes and, and, and see what the growth, and they can show off in front of their families. And – he's like, after he did it, he comes over. He's like, Hey, I, I can go again. And I'm like, no, no, no. That was your third lift. That's all we wanted yeah. you to do. Like, we'll, we'll get to it the next phase. And, and, and he's still going, but you know, um, these kids, a, a girl walked out after that powerlifting meet and she said, I feel so strong. I feel like I can lift up the world right now. Mm. And, and that sense of empowerment is exactly what we are trying to, to bring to these children. Yeah. And we have a girl named, we had a girl named Grace in our program that the first three classes, the first week we had, she never walked in the door. Her dad came in and worked out with us and she sat out in the parking lot on the curb and cried because she was not comfortable walking in there. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it reminds you of what adults and kids of any lifestyle where they are go into when they enter something new, the anxiety of that. Mm-hmm. And one of our coaches sat out there with her all three of those days her name was Josie, our coach. And Josie sat out there and just got to know her. And she, and she finally, on the end of the third day, came in for the Topuku lesson. And she came in for the Topuku lesson, listened to it. Another girl came up to her and introduced herself. She smiled a little bit. And the next class, her dad's like, um, I think she's going to come in right now. Mm. And I'm like, great. And she came in and we all talked and introduced ourselves like we normally would and started. And by the end of our phase she was running our our brand x warm-ups like our barbell warm-ups yeah and she's speaking and she's vocal and she's confident and she created this friendship group and you know it it's easy to measure the blood work it's easy to measure the bmi and the weight loss and the things like that the strength numbers that grow those are all things that when you talk to healthcare providers and companies like that's what they want to know right but what we see in this program in addition to all of those measurements are the unmeasurables, right? Like the, the smiles, yes. the, 
um, positive encouragement, the confidence that they show. Um, one of our girls here at my school, I run our school's aftercare program, and she now, she came to me one day and was complaining, like, she's like, I, I don't know if I can do this. I have to get a job. And I'm like, what are you interested in? She's like, I just, I just want to make money. And I'm like, well, I can give you a job. And she's like, doing what? I'm like, taking care of a bunch of four-year-olds <laughs> after school for three hours a day. And she's like, well, I don't know if I can do that. I have to get my license and I don't have that. Now, keep in mind, like when I was a kid and I turned 16, like that day I went and got my driver's license. I was yeah. ready. And now the, it's one of the changes we see a lot with kids now is they're not as into that. And she's like, well, I don't have my license yet. I just haven't done it. And I said, well, I tell you what, her name's um, Anna. I say, Anna, you go get your license. And when you get your license, I'll, I'll have the interview waiting for you. And two weeks later, she comes back. She's like, shows me her license. She's like, I, I, I studied, I took the tests, I, 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 I did it. And so the, the very next week she was in here interviewing for the job and she's been working for us in aftercare ever since. And that is a huge change, right? She went yeah. from someone who never worked at all to now she has, she's a, school, she's a student in school, she's a senior in high school and she has a job. And now she's looking at what's, what's beyond school, right? Like, yes. am I going to go to college? It's, a, it's now a thought in her mind. It, it, those are little building blocks that we can develop that confidence to now she has some confidence to go out and try something. And like, yeah, I might go to college, you know, and that's awesome. What would you say? Because obviously, the, as, she, as you said, like she didn't have her license. And do you think that children and kids and teens now are kind of more apprehensive about trying things because they're not being exposed at a younger age to challenges, adversity? Because they they're trying to be parents are trying to, the helicopter parents are trying to protect them. They're trying to like we don't want our chill, children to fail at anything, so we'll protect them from everything. And then when it comes to something as simple as, well, if you had your license, you could get a job and get paid. Like, and then for her, she obviously you say she's in school, she's got a job, she's also got a newfound independence by being able to drive. Where do you feel it, it would like if you could like? Sorry, my question would be, what do you think has gone wrong? In, and it's in Ireland as well. It's, I think it's all, over, it's all over the world where children now are just, the, the anxiety levels of kids are going through the roof. They don't, they're afraid of, it's afraid of trying and failing because they're not like when I was, when I turned 18, I couldn't wait. Or when I turned 16, I couldn't wait to get a job. All those type of things. Yeah. I was dying yeah. to do it. I was hungry for it. Whereas like we're seeing it less and less kids don't want to, eh, oh, if I try on my fail kind of thing, where, where would you, have you seen that a lot? And then if so, where do you think it's stemming from? Um, yes. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's prevalent everywhere right now. Mm -hmm. It's, it's happening. The anxiety levels are higher more so than ever. I think we can equate those changes and the way they feel and, Oddly, I think we can equate it to how we feel our bodies, yeah. how we rest our bodies, how we spend time relaxing. I think kids think today, and I mean, you can, you can go through a grocery store and you'll see a one-year-old in a cop shopping cart. And instead of driving the little car and mm -hmm. looking around and observing what people are doing in the human interaction, they're holding an iPad now. Yeah. And it's not their parents' iPad. It's got this pretty little bright green, like, case on it that sh clearly shows it's their iPad, Yeah, you know? And, and so they're in this culture where they just, I want this, I want this. Oh, I lost this game. I'm just going to do another one that I, I it, you know, it just, you don't fail. Yeah. And so one, one of the terms, the phrases I used to use in coaching and, and we use here at my school, my school does a really amazing job. We have a great challenge curriculum and outdoor education program. And we talk to kids about, you need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm, like yeah. it's our job as educators and parents to put you in situations where you're a little uncomfortable and then see how you work through that. Yeah. And you know, I tell kids every day and, and they know me and we, you know, we, we have a relationship where I spend every day with them for 30 minutes and some classes for 45 minutes every day in PE mm. where I can talk to them like this, but I tell them, 
if you're not failing in my class every day during a workout, like what we're doing, like you're not growing. Yeah. So we create this culture here of like, it's okay to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, when there are sixth graders here at our school, they give a speech about their experience here in front of the entire parent body. You know, that to me, that's anxiety. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I would hate to get up and present like that, but they're doing it and they're confident, they're articulate. But in the great, in the big global world where we are today, we, we aren't doing that. We're not letting kids learn how to walk by pulling themselves up and falling down. Yeah. We keep picking them up and holding them and kids need to get up and fall down. And I remember when I would interview for teaching jobs, I would always use that analogy that as a teacher, we're like a parent and you know that the kid is going to walk one day, you know that. So when they pull themselves up, you say, Oh, take a step. And you just watch them and you know, they're going to mm. fall. You know that. So, you know, yeah. there's failure, um, but you keep going. And so you keep that expectation bar very high Yeah. where nowadays, I don't know if everyone keeps that mindset as, as parents, it, I, we look I, a lot into what's easy. Yeah. And I, I actually say it's something similar um, is I, I, I teach how you, how you fell is that's why we do burpees. So when you were a baby, you stood up, you fell over. And what you do, you picked yourself back up. You pretty much did a burpee. And all the kids are like, I love whatever, it. coach. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's what it is. Or I always say, who hands up, who can cycle a bike? Did you get it the first yeah. time? Did you fall? So you fell repeatedly. But did you get it? Yes. Why? Because you wanted to cycle your bike. And I was like, that is why we work hard. That is why we try things that are fearful. Uh, because generally a fear is false evidence appearing real. And when you overcome it, guess what? You can now help someone else. And Absolutely. we always say that to our kids that have grown up. We're going through a transition where our junior kids are now our senior kids. And they're going to be now, uh, they're in a, in a very unique position where they get to help our junior kids understand that it's okay if you're not getting it. It's okay if your squat doesn't look great. And it's okay if you don't, like if you come last in a workout that we're doing or you need to take a breath or take some water, that's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I think well, like your point, like that's, yeah, it's, it's 100% okay to fail. And I think we need to fail and fail forward to get there. But it also builds, again, that resilience. And I think one thing that I kind of wanted to touch on um, was how important is it for you guys or for your teens or the kids you work with to understand that it's not just about the gym because there's a lot of mental, there's a mental side to it, a mental resilience side to it and social side to um, their training, their eating habits. Um, so do you, do you use kind of, it's, and it's not just a physical issue with weight, it, there's also a mental issue there. How do you use approach that? Or do you use approach it? And in what way does it go for you guys? Um, yeah, we, we approach that. I mean, it's, if you just didn't do anything with nutrition for some of these kids initially early on, they would lose weight, right? If they yeah. just lifted weights, they would lose weight. But what we try to explain to them is that is the smallest snippet of the big picture. Yeah. You know, that's why in our program, Topuku is so valuable. We, we talk about the nutrition and, and obviously nutrition is a part of that, but unless we change the mind and get the mind to understand what we're doing, you know, you know, you train the, you, you, you train the mind, the body will follow. I always think about a lot of times like, um, and, and what I mean by that is if you can understand yourself and how you think, how you internally handle negative pressure, positive pressure, um, internal motivation, external motivation, and when you can understand yourself and how that works, you can really start to show some amazing growth. But mm. the weight training is just a small part of you. The sleep is important. The disconnecting from electronics yeah. is very important. Um, you know, one of the things I, I did a week with our kids is, hey, you're going to have dinner with your family without your phones. <laughs> like, you're going to put it away. And they thought I was crazy. I'm like, no, 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 that's actually going to be a thing. Like, it's okay. You can do it. But it's, it's something that our kids understand as they start to build a, a level of trust with us. Yeah. 
they understand that they can, they can try these things and they can do these things. Um, the confidence starts, I guess you train the body, the mind will follow, right? You, 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 you get this in the gym where you start to build this positivity. And what we do from day one is tell these kids, you are extremely strong. Mm. You, you are carrying a lot of weight every day. We know you're strong. We're going to prove that to you. Yeah. And, 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 and we also make sure we don't crush them. Like if we went out there and said, okay, you're going to do Fran today, right? Like, bye-bye. No one's coming back. Like it's over, you know? Um, And so you have to build these workouts in a way that it does challenge them from a physicality standpoint. And it does, excuse me, increase their heart rate and get them moving in the right direction. But it, it also has to be successful. Yeah. And so, and so going back to what we said in the very beginning, all those little wins, you know, like when we talk about going to the grocery store and we say, Hey, if you're, why don't you go with your family this week? And all the things we talked about in the nutrition lesson, why don't you pick a couple of those things mm. out and try them? I mean, we, we did a lesson, um, Darcy, one of our, one of our coaches, she's a, she's a nutritionist and she brought in trail mix and had small little serving sizes of trail mix. And after the workout and the, le- the Topuku lesson was over, we got onto the, tr- we, we gave them all trail mix and I'll never forget Al. And it's, it's about exposure, what it's supposed to, right? So Al tastes it, chews it up. And he looks right at Darcy and he goes, this tastes just like peanut butter. And she's like, yeah, like, of, of course, th- these yeah. are nuts. You know, and he's like, I love peanut butter, <laughs> you know? And she's like, he's like, can I get a couple more of those? And she's like, yeah. no this is your like this is what and he's like oh okay okay well i mean you could have a serve of that of my snack and i would be just and so great we got him a big old bag of trail mix and said here's your serving cup and if you want a snack there you go right Perfect. um you, you know um and and the, from the parent component where we've had a lot of success gracie her dad dan he he always came to every workout he would see our nutrition lessons he would see the meals they would get sent home and he came back and he's like, Hey, I'm, um, I'm going to try to do this nutrition, this meal prep on my own yeah. this week. And so I'm like, great, send me some pictures. So he sends me a picture of all these Tupperware containers sitting. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Broccoli. And I'm like, dude, it looks amazing. And he's like, yeah. And so all the guys smells good. What are you making? And he's like, Oh, well, I'm doing this program team lift with my daughter and he's about meal prep. And all of a sudden he turns around and he's selling meals to his coworkers now because they're paying him to meal prep. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now it's just growing, but you know, it's, it's that understanding out, like understanding in the gym that everything you do outside of the gym is going to bring back um, positive results in the gym. So yes. if you're getting more sleep, if you're staying off your phone, if you're eating right, like it, it all ebbs and flows together. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. you know, I, I wrote a book with some, with a, with a woman for some kids once and it was called, my name's Justin. And it says it was called super J and the body mechanics. And we talked about your body as a car and the kids, this always resonates with the kids. It's like, we always ask them like, especially teenagers, what's your favorite car? They're like, Oh, Lamborghini, Ferrari. Like, uh, okay. So now you have that car, that's your car. And you're going to the gas station down the road. What kind of gas are you going to put in it? Are you going to put regular gas in it? Or you put premium gas in it? And they're like, well, I'm going to put the best gas I can put in this amazing car. Mm. Okay. Why don't you think about your body like that? Like your body is the car. You want it to be a Ferrari. You got to, you got to fuel it like a Ferrari, right? Like, and, and it may not look like a Ferrari right now, but if you train it and you work it, you can, it can become whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Um, you know, the other side of what we do and what makes it work, actually, hang on one second. Jose is texting me. Um, I'm going to send this link to Jose and he's going to try to hop on okay. if that's okay. Yeah. Um, he, um, one of the things that we were discussing that is our lives. So Jose grew up, um, he was an obese child. I was, um, at the time, we used the phrase husky. Yeah, I was I was I was a chunky teen myself. Yeah, mm. yeah, I was I was a husky kid that hated it. I was a big basketball, football, baseball player, and I hated it during basketball. We'd go shirts and skins. That oh, was yeah. the first moment I think like 
third and fourth grade that I was like, I felt uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and Jose and I, Hey Jose, how's it going, buddy? Hey Jose. And, and hello. And, how you doing, buddy? Sweaty from a case. Straight from uh, uh, theater. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, Jose, I was just telling him, I'm, I'm, get, I'm starting to tell him a story about kind of our childhoods and kind of how this teen lift stuff resonates. Um, sure. And Jose and I were both, I would say, husky um, children growing up. Probably in some ways we could at times have been labeled as obese. And um, I think obese, not maybe. <laughs> and um, and so, you know, uh, in a lot of ways, this program, we can relate to a lot of these kids. Um, yeah. You know, Jose, um, how many schools were you kicked out of? I was at delinquent. I was, I graduated from my third high school. Um, so uh, my, my third, two schools I was expelled from. I was <laughs> suspended innumerable number of times. Um, and now you're a pediatric surgeon. surgeon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty remarkable change, right? And so, um, you know, I've also had some challenges in my life. And my mom had me when she was 16 years old, and she raised me on her own my whole life, and um, and also battled, you know, her own, um, you know, substance challenges and things like that. And through all that, we are as close as ever. We've grown. Um, I was the first person in my family to go to college. Mm. I paid for my own college. And so, you know, the things that Jose and I have gone through in our lives to be where we are, are stories that we tell to our kids to let them know, like, they're not alone. And you can, you can create success. You just have to decide you want to do it. Yeah. And it's, it's really been, I think it's been impactful for a lot of the kids um, and, and, and positive. I know for a fact, once, when, when we started telling our story, that was when the tide had shifted in our classes where the, the level of respect went from, and, and, and trust went from like a surface level to like a deep, meaningful, like these guys are opening up to us. Well, they care the, about us. It went from a level of authority to people listening to level of authority to that we're all the same. We're all on the same level and we are all, we've all gone through it and that it, we, our, our experiences are not that different than theirs. And so we get it. Their, their, their struggles are not, are not distant, aren't very clear, very real. And that resonates when you have that, uh, when that can resonate with, when you can connect with a teenager through your story, like I know that I met a I met a coach when I was younger, and he literally just told me, "If you're not willing to do work," and he really like I wanted to be a basketball player. He was five foot seven. He was not. He was he was uh, white. He lived in North Carolina. It was never going to really happen. But he worked his way. He broke into the gym. He he played. He played. He played. He ended up becoming. Uh, he did very well in college. Went on and coaches around the world now. But he was saying like I got to where I was because literally, I was told no, and I had to work really, really hard. And when he said that to me, I remember like if I'm not willing to work hard, how will I ever expect to get anywhere? But his, I resonate with him. And if I like twenty years later, if I go into the gym. And he's there and he's screaming and, and hollering at um, a bunch of 12, 13 year old kids. I will, if he call, if he whistles, I'll stop on my track still uh, <laughs> because of that. Just, I, I just have that much respect for him. But his, his story, when I heard his story, I was like, I'm, I don't have it that hard. I don't like, I can do better. I can work harder. And like you guys telling your stories, again with, with the kids you work with they can resonate and i think that, that that's that's a huge relationship that you can build and i think you can go further with kids uh because of your story rather than as you said jose has been the authoritarian and not letting them see you and what you've gone through yeah we want them to realize that our successes like they, they see us successful people it didn't happen in a vacuum it happened because of a lot of hard work, but also with a lot of finding a way to be encouraged. And we try to give, we try to empower them. We, we tell, we, I mean, 
all of our kids in our program are battling health issues. Yeah. We, we, what we do is we use, we use weightlifting specifically and specifically programmed weight as a proof of concept for them that if they put in the work, they can, objectively and tangibly that they will get stronger yeah same way that they can see for the first time maybe in their life taste what success feels like just in a tangible way we use that weightlifting as a as a model or as a parable of how they can be successful in anything yeah you know we use the the grand x method program to show them that what their PRs can be at the end of the at the end of the program, but that's like all that hard work to get strong. If you put in that same hard work in school and put in the same hard work at trying to be healthy and the same hard work to make better decisions in family and in life, you can be a successful person. But I think the weightlifting, the cool piece of the weightlifting is all the programming is made so this way they don't get injured and they only see success. So yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I got, uh, there's a, there's a book that we give out to our kids, uh, when they, they, their attitude reflects the leadership as in they lead by example. And it's, uh, a, a Jack Willow book, the way to warrior kid. And it's literally about how a kid had to overcome his own adversity so he could help other kids. And we, we've, we've given that, we, we I, I, I think I have like still 10 books in the office that I give out. And I just think it's a good life lesson that if you're, if, if you're not good at something, put in the work. And if you're good and when you get good at something, then it's your obligation to pass that on and help with our kids. And, and that's something that like, Who are you? right? Yeah. Jacko Willick. There's three of them. He has like three or four of them now. They're absolutely, I've actually read them yeah. all. I actually really enjoyed them. I'm waiting for my son to be old enough so he, I can <laughs> read them in public. <laughs> We're reading kids' books. Like. Um, but for, I know like last time we, when we spoke in the email and stuff and was spoken to Jeff over, uh, over the last year, I was, I was actually very keen to hear more about Teen Lift and what's going to happen in 2020. And I know, um, you have plans to do stuff. And I was kind of my last question on the list for this podcast would have been what is the plans moving forward in like 2020? And like, what are your plans of what's the hopes for Teen Lift? Maybe that's probably the best question. What is the hope for Teen Lift? So, Justin, you want to get this one? Um, sure. Yeah. So, our hope for Teen Lift is the same goal that we have for every class, right? Is to reach and help as many kids as we can. That's the goal. Yeah. We chose teens because they were the most at risk population. And if we can make the change now, they would have the greatest chance of change for the rest of their lives. So our goal is to continue to grow and expand as much as possible. We've um, just got off a talk, like I said today, with Turtle Mountain Reservation in North Dakota. We were talking with them about growing out there. We have some systems in place here in Missouri with um, some Medicaid um, patients and two um, healthcare companies that we're wanting to pilot a project with them that we hope as long as the, sh the growth is what they like, that we could then open up all over the state of Missouri. Mm. And then um, we're talking to a place in, I believe it's Montana later today, where we're looking to grow. And what we're trying to do right now is really build out with brand X coaches. The one thing that we know is we, we know we could go in any gym anywhere, but like, like we talked about earlier, Stephen, with how our personal coaches, yeah. um, those are special people, right? And they have yes. to understand our philosophy and our way of talking, working, handling these delicate kids, um, their kids. There's, even though they might look older or bigger, like they're still kids. And they've developed and handled a lot of trauma in their life. And so for us, we want to go to Brand X training centers first and really think about growing it there mm. and then continue to train and educate and, and, and find other ways to grow. So we've, we have a few hospitals that have reached out to us already that are interested in programs and they're two of the th top three um, obesity research hospitals in America. 
and we're just growing. So just to give you like an idea, so the Harvard Medical School Hospital, Mass General, which is probably the most well-endowed private hospital in the in the country, yeah, and they have many many obesity programs already in place. They were floored with what we're doing. So to get the attention of the very best and to say that we're doing it better than they are. Yeah. That's, that's pretty crazy. So our goal, you know, Jeff and Mickey is to somehow train their folks to be team lift slash brand X method coaches, their physical therapists or whoever their staff is and have a team lift program by the end of 2020 at that hospital. And then the other hospital that caught the attention is Texas children's hospital which is the largest hospital in the United States. That's, that's, um, like that's a phenomenal reach. And the fact that the best, as you said, the best hospital in, in, in America now is like, was floored by what you guys are doing. But I think that also falls into the category is that you are both and your team are so passionate about it because I find that we see it with other gyms that run kids programs it's can they make money it's not about can they help uh like we started off with two kids for months on end and it was tough i had two coaches for two kids that was that was tough some days it was two coaches and one kid and then we got three and then we got four now we have 60 kids a week coming through the doors because i believe that part of what i'm meant to do is to help kids and teens develop because I'm passionate about working with them and educating them. Uh, and I think that comes across on, on the Teen Lift Instagram, it comes across on the website. And just from talking to you guys, it, it clearly comes across that it's, it's passionate. And I think if you're passionate about something, it's going to work, it has to work. And we, we, you said it earlier, Justin, if you have the passion, it's inevitably going to get to the end result, which you're starting to see what other hospitals wanting to come on board and like literally, start listening to you guys because what what you're doing is working and I, I can do nothing but commend what you guys have started uh, and I really look forward to seeing what comes from in 2020 and moving forward because there is a, a much need for it not only in America there's a need all over the world and what uh, you're we, doing we, is we plan on being everywhere I mean Jeff and Mickey is getting phone calls from Saudi Saudi Arabia for us to take a look at something there mm. which is uh okay maybe a little bit too far <laughs> too far away to really do but i mean the point is if we're getting that level of attention then we're doing something right yeah that's so, I, that's that's perfect um the cool thing actually i'm going to say is i think not something that justin and i expected we thought maybe there would be a chance that this is something that we would see but while we were hoping to impact kids in terms of their health, the amount of changes that these kids have been able to um, to actualize beyond health specifically, but in the fact that they feel successful themselves, we had several kids who had dropped out of high school. And we have one who is currently on the honor roll in his high school on, on track to graduate. And then another girl who um, she was sexually abused and she was a, a baby born to a mother who was a, a crack uh, addict and she uh, adopted and was basically, she was basically dropped out of school and was being homeschooled and not doing anything. She's now going to school and she works actually, just, she's a, a, one of the aides in Justin's after school program. We're giving these kids the tools to be successful people. Mm. We're, is so far beyond what we could have expected, but it makes sense, right? Because if you give people who've never felt what success feels like, give them that taste, it's an it's like you can get addicted to, to success. Yeah, and that's, that's like the best addiction to have, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a healthy addiction, you know. One hundred percent, and then also is the fact that they see that you guys care. Right. Like you're, you could be some of the first people that actually showed a very big interest in their well being, not just by coming and turning up to class, but what they're eating, how they're doing in school, 
uh, being on the honor roll, thinking about college, getting a job, and just because you care, then they they see that, and then their oh, their their, their uh, kind of mindset is more broadened to well, hey, I can probably live a better life than what I was kind of resigning myself to, or what my peers have resigned me to, um, yeah. and that, that that's. <sighs> I don't think you could ask for anything better than seeing something like that. And if that's what comes out of it, you've already won. Exactly. In my opinion, you've already won. Like if, if you help a kid that was being bullied, understand that it's not them, it's just other people and that they're strong in their own mindset. I think you win. I think you win hands down. And uh, again, you can only commend it. You can only commend that what you have done is, 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 is amazing. And, like I, I like I follow you guys. I've asked Jeff and Mickey about you for a long time. Uh, I, I I think what it is, it's amazing. And actually, after Jose, you answering my email originally, um, I looked at some things a lot differently than the way I was looking at it originally when it came to like obesity and looking at kids and what the problems were. I I look at it a broader and a, a more inclusive aspect of trying to help kids. Um, uh, but that was, again, I didn't, I didn't have the right information. You guys have put in all the research and the, the more this can get out, the more people can listen to it, the more people can understand what you guys are doing and helping. And the more people that want to help as a, we can change generations to come. Uh, I think that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah, yes. I agree. Um, 100%. So guys, um, that is a good, I think, hour and 20 minute podcast. Uh, Jose, the last 20 minutes were cool too. <laughs> um, but guys, uh, firstly, thank you for being on the show. Uh, what we're going to do is there's going to be uh, link notes to Teen Lift Instagram, the website, and then just um, is there anything else that you guys want to me to put in or uh, is that else you just want to say? Uh, to finish up the call or are you happy you have um, no I, I think everything went well I just would say to anyone that's interested in learning more if they want to talk to us to send us a message and reach yeah. out um, through any of the social um, avenues would be a great way to start and we're happy to help and talk in any way possible I mean we've had a lady from Maryland that stumbled across us come and visit us one day on her way through um, mm. because she's in charge of her um, local community and changing their programs because the uh, um, mortality rate is drastically different on one side of town than the other. Yeah. And it has to do with, you know, poverty and the way of life. And so, you know, like anybody that we can help and wants to talk and learn, like we're in, let's do yeah. it. No, that's perfect. Cool. I love it. I will say, I will say anybody who sees it in real life walks away saying, this is literally magical. We have a local dietitian who is a, a, a Ironman triathlon coach. So he basically trains specifically Ironman triathletes, uh, but he's, his background is as, the, as a dietitian, and he knows Jeff and Mickey for a long time. And he came to our very first yeah. lifting meet, uh, Ken, Roberts. Ken Roberts. And he came over to us afterwards. He's like, basically in tears. He's like, I've been waiting for something like this to come along. I couldn't have imagined that it would be something this amazing. But this is the this is the best thing I've ever seen, and and addressing the problem at its core, and I mean it was he gave us a huge shout out on on his blog, um, but the fact that it's people who see it see the fact that we didn't cut any corners, we built this on solid 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 foundations, uh, and and everything we do is based on the literature. It's based on mm. the research. This is the best stuff. No, that's amazing. Um, and again, it's for anyone listening to this, it's it's a testament to people that are passionate about helping other humans. And it's a it's a basic human um, endeavor that I think that you you want to help other people be better people. And that it's a hard. It's I find it kind of rare to meet people. Uh, we've like, again, this is the first time I've spoken to you two kind of live. It's, it's rare to see that. And then we, we, what you guys are doing and with, with coaches from Brand X and other coaches from other disciplines, 
that the goal is to help as many people, like our mission statement here at FSM is to help as many people as possible through fitness. Whatever that may be, that is my goal, is to impact as many people positively through fitness. And I think based off that mission, it will, I will be successful because no matter what I'll do, I'll give, I'll give as much as I can to get help people as often as I can. Uh, our mission, it's the same mission. It's a very, yeah. very, it's aligned with the same sort of goals. Yeah. Um, so guys, firstly, uh, again, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, when like, I'd love to kind of do something more specific at a specific topic further down the road, if you are willing. Sure. Um, but as I said, this will be on guys, this will be on Spotify, YouTube and Podbean. All the links it will be going out in, uh, I think two weeks. Uh, we'll post everything up. I'll let you, I'll send you the links to the video before we, we post it. And, and guys, again, I, I can't thank you very much for sharing your story and uh, let me uh, finally get to meet you both. Awesome. Great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.